it seems as to me that as technology gets better and police have made more tools to work with, the rate of crime goes up. I grew up in a relatively crime-free town in Kent and now young teens stabbing, why? That's the culture of the youth. That's the culture of the youth. There's loads of reasons why the, the youth are using knives now. And it's not just drugs. Most of them are defending themselves. Sounds mad, doesn't it? But, you know, in society, well, especially in Liverpool. See, what's going on in Liverpool? Crime is that deep and that... Um, it's involved in every walk of life crime. So let's look at the MMA world in Liverpool. The majority of fighters that you see bracing your screens in the UFC have criminal ties. It doesn't mean the criminal. It doesn't mean they've committed crimes. It just means that's life in Liverpool. It's that deep. It's generational. You've got lads who go to MMA gyms. You've got lads like, let's look at Paddy Paddy, for instance, say. Eh? Now, Paddy Paddy, bracing your screens, I've always picked them up. I've always picked them up. But since I targeted his friends a few months ago, you know, I've had a large portion of hate coming my way for whatever reasons. And when you're willing to sit down with a podcaster, that is involved with the dirty Irish Kinnaton cartel. When you're willing to sit with that person, you're basically involved with that group of dirty criminals, aren't you? But let me bring it back with regards to how deep Liverpool is in the city. And as I was saying, you've got a lot of stars, whether the celebrities, sports stars or singers, coming from certain areas. And they've always been surrounded by murderers, gun runners, drug smugglers, people in communities that have committed acts of violence consistently, continuously, up until they are arrested and incarcerated. And these kids, likes of Paddy the Baddy, you know, when you think of Paddy the Baddy, he is what he is. He gave that powerful speech, didn't he? And he gave that powerful speech about... When he becomes rich, he's going to make sure every child in Liverpool does not go without food. That's still to be seen. He mightn't consider himself rich enough just yet. But he's been calling himself the cash cow, hasn't he? So he must have a lot of cash somewhere. But I'm not seeing him delivering that message that elevated him a while back in the eyes of most scouts. And then you see him again. And this is what really does my head in. You've got people in one hand portraying a positive light, but then on the other hand, they're deeply connected to people who are deeply involved in organised crime groups. So you will have seen. Watch out, TikTok. Thanks for that very much, mate. Thanks a lot. So you will have seen. Um, when Paddy the Baddy won his last fight and he had this emotional breakdown about mental health within men and you need to be reaching out and it was great, it was fantastic and then what you, when you watch the interviews after him he starts talking about how he found out his friend had passed away and during them interviews you will hear him use the name of Zist yeah, zest, zest. Go and watch it. My good mate rang me at four o'clock in the morning, and I kicked off on him saying, "What are you doing? I'm on a way in five hours." Blah blah blah. And I said to zest, zest, or whatever you want to call this little piece. Of this, but none of you are really aware of who zest is. Or Zist, or whatever they call them these days. Ah, yes. You might have heard me mention them over the last few weeks. When you're hearing about the Ashley Gale murder, 
when you're hearing about knee, who was the one that was chased into the house when that young when that young girl was shot dead. These are all his friends. They're his friends. These are Paddy the Baddy's friends. And he, he's freely open about it. You know, he's not scared to admit that he's got good mates involved with organised crime groups that are killing children within the city of Liverpool. He doesn't either. He's not ashamed of it. But that's exactly what I'm trying to point out. On one hand, it's all fantastic and plastic. But then on the other hand, you know, you're still aligned to individuals that are running around the city, peddling guns, peddling drugs and shooting kids. So this is what I'm saying about how deep, how deep. Let me just find out. So let me just see if I can get this off for you. won't mind me bringing that up. You mentioned the mental health. Very emotional speech you made after your last fight. Yes. With your friend Ricky. Can you talk about that? As I say, like. I found, I literally found out that he, that he done that. Five hours before I was due to weigh in. Took his own life, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Five, literally five hours before I was due to weigh in. I'll be honest, I bit me mate's head off at first because I woke up all dry mouth because we cut weights, we cut water weights throughout the, the night before to weigh in. And I had a message on my phone at like four in the morning. And I was like, I bit me mate's head off. I was like, mm, that chest, what are you doing? Don't, don't message me at this time, I'm waiting in the morning. I was like, hmm. I bit me mate's head off. I was like, Zest, what are you doing? Don't message me at this time. I've got me waiting at five hours in the morning. Zest, what are you doing? And I had a message on my phone at like four in the morning. And I was like, I bit me mate's head off. I was like, hmm, that Zest, what are you doing? Don't, don't message me at this time. I'm waiting. Zest, what are you doing? I was like, I bit me mate's head off. I was like, mm, that chest, what are you doing? So on my phone at like four in the morning. And I was like, I bit me mate's head off. I was like, mm, that chest, what are you doing? Don't. Morning. And I was like, I bit me mate's head off. I was like, mm, that chest, what are you doing? Don't, don't message me at this time. Now, as I was speaking about this zest that he refers to as his good friend, is a very, very dangerous piece of shit when he's got a firearms in his hand. And he's been involved in all sorts of madness in Liverpool for quite a long time. So within that zest, You've got a kid called Sean Zest. Zis. Now, Sean Zest is currently on remand right now as we speak for conspiracy to murder Jamie Nee, who is the brother of Joseph Nee, who was the target in the Olivia Carbell murder. This is also on conspiracies with different types of guns and drugs offences. Now, this isn't me hating, you know. This is me just letting you know how deep crime can get. Now, I'm not suggesting for one minute a Paddy the Baddy is involved in the distribution of narcotics and firearms around the city of Liverpool. But I am suggesting and confirming to use that he has very, very, very close ties to individuals that are involved in murders, drug smuggling and gun running around the city of Liverpool and around the country. So does Paddy know 
who killed Ashley Dale with them being so close to these individuals? Because these individuals know quite well who killed Ashley Dale. They know everything about what's gone on down there. And if he does know, you know, what's going on there? Now let's delve into Sean Zeist's name. Let's have a little look. All you've got to do is Google and name people to understand where I'm coming from and what I'm on about. So here's, here's a few captions in the local paper in Liverpool. Sean Zees charged with conspiring to get guns and cause GBH. The 27-year-old was accused of conspiring to attack Jamie Nee. Now, this incident is before... He chased down Joseph Nee, entered the house of Ashley Gale, and end up killing an innocent woman. Let's go on to see what it says. A man has been charged with conspiring to possess two firearms and to cause grievous bodily harm after being arrested over alleged communications on an Encro chat device. Sean Zeese, 27, is accused of conspiring with the unnamed others to cause GBH to a Jamie Knee on April 10th, 2020 in Long Breach Road, Heighton. He is also accused of conspiring to possess a 38 calibre revolver and a Scorpion self-loading pistol on the same date in the same location. Zeese, formerly of Heighton but now remanded in HMP Wakefield, also faces charges of conspiracy to supply heroin, cocaine, cannabis resin and ketamine between January the 1st and June the 12th, 2020. Zeis was due to appear in Liverpool Crown Court today via video link from HMP Wakefield, but the hearing was postponed due to issues with prison staff. Do you wonder what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Now, the, point, the reason I'm pointing this out, people, is because, you know, a young woman's being shot dead. These people are involved in that. They are involved. Obviously, it can't be proven right now, but they are involved. Another one, Sean Zeese denies involvement in alleged firearms and serious assault plots. A man has denied being involved in alleged plot to possess firearms and seriously assault others. Sean Zeese has been charged with conspiring to cause grievous bodily harm to Jamie Knee on Longreach Road in Heighton 2020. He also faces a count of conspiracy to possess firearms and ammunition, namely a 3.8 calibre revolver and the Scorpion, as mentioned before. Zeese appeared before Liverpool Crown Court via video link at HMP Wakefield this afternoon, Friday. The 27-year-old pleaded not guilty to these charges. However, he admitted conspiracy to supply heroin, cocaine, cannabis resin and ketamine. The charges relate to Operation Venetech, the UK law enforcement's response to the infiltration of encrypted communications platform EncroChat. A trial date was set for February the 13th next year, which is a few months away, with Zeist of no fixed address but from Heighton remanded into custody ahead of a further case management hearing on December the 21st. So do you understand what I'm saying? Now, as I mentioned before, 
I'm not suggesting that Paddy the Baddy is involved in the distribution of drugs or firearms. I'm not saying he's even concerned in the supply of drugs, although certain members of his family have been convicted for selling drugs in the city of Liverpool in the past. I'm not suggesting for one minute that Paddy the Baddy is doing the same thing. The only thing I'm trying to do here is trying to educate us on how deep criminality in Liverpool is and how you've got people bracing your screens, bracing the platforms of world stages, proclaiming to be this, that and the other, but at the same time, being best friends with people that are implicated in the murders of young women shot dead in their own homes. It's very important you understand where I'm coming from. You know, you've got to look at that area as a whole and you've got to look at the MMA arena as a whole in Liverpool. Now, the first criminals to start a gym around the city of Liverpool and in the area of Merseyside. It was a gym called Wolfslayer. I forgot the fella's name that initially opened that gym. But Wolfslayer was an MMA gym, and you had the people that like The Belly, Kelly, Jackson, Michael Bisping. You had all these individuals going there. Eventually, Wolfslayer was burnt down, and Team Colburn took over the pedestal. And Team Colburn, within that gymnasium, never open to the public, only open to a set few or a set dozen, has been deeply, deeply involved with distributing firearms and narcotics around the country. You've only got to look at their fighters that's been convicted for conspiring to deal drugs. MMA, Belly Kelly, one of them. And there was a few others from the past. I can't remember the names. Recently, you've got Colin Heron, who's the main honcho at Team Coburn. You still see him now bracing your screens when there's big fights going on. He's always there looking after the fighters in the corner. But what he does on the side is lives and profits from organised crime groups. Colin Heron's brother, Peter Heron, was convicted of conspiracy to murder about 26 years ago in Wavertree. When him, Jimmy Murphy and Lee Cassidy entered a public house and shot dead a man while he was sat there with his family and friends. Peter Heron, the brother of Colin Heron, went to prison for a life sentence. When he was released on life license from that sentence, Colin Heron, as a brother, brought him in to Team Coburn. He was there. He was like a trainer, good on the pads. You know, we could take kids on the pads all day. That was his expertise. Within four years of Peter Heron being released, he was then rearrested as part of the Encro Chat investigation in Liverpool. He has just been last year given double figures for smuggling cocaine and heroin around the country from Europe. And these are the type of people when I'm speaking about Darren Till, when I'm speaking about Team Colburn's co-owners, the Kinnerton Cartel, MTK Global. You see, when you go into Team Colburn's gym, it's just saturated with MT Coble equipment. They've gone in there, they've refurbished it, and that was their way of laundering money. And when you're seeing these below-average fighters like Till gracing the world stage a few years ago, getting beat consistently, ending up on cocaine, but always being given the big fights. There was reasons for that. 
And that's how deep and powerful organised crime is in the city of Liverpool.